the economy has developed an empirical science on the basis of the development of computers. This is an, a, a basic tool for us, the uh, IT, uh, allowing us to test certain laws that we arrive at following deduction. But you know that computers developed following the Second World War, following the impulses of the Second World War with trying to crack the German communication system. Very quickly, certain findings uh, came about, which we know now as paradoxes or perversions. We have Levante paradox, which shows that more developed and richer countries export labor-intensive commodities. And then Calderon perversion, which says that the more competitive a country is, the higher its wages. This is understandable, but for the institution where I stand at now, this is shocking because it then cannot breathe with high wages that it is paying out. The empiric studies on energy emerged in the 50s in Great Britain, and they con were concerned with the revenue growth and its impact on energy consumption. How could investments be adapted to that? Because most of the sector then was of infrastructure nature. So this was, this was the basic for various analyses uh, underpinned with many software, uh, which was still very rudimentary, but it has constantly been upgraded. And this analysis shows much elasticity of demand, how the, what is the price elasticity of demand, and what does this let us know on the potential monopoly status of uh, suppliers? You know that I used to be Minister of Finance, and it, we, this means that if elasticity is very low, that you can provide and put high tax on a certain commodity. I guess that some of you would have a comment to this, but this is beneficial to Consumers. So in this event, a country or a state will exploit the monopoly status of a certain supplier. Last year, we could see how the demand or how the consumption responded to higher prices uh, on this specific market in Slovenia. Then we started to estimate the revenue elasticity, which is the link between the revenue and the consumption. So what is the interrelation? If this elasticity is positive and high, uh, this goes according to the Engel law. Engel was German, and he said that commodities have various character and that they impact the revenue grow uh, in a different way. If this elasticity is positive and below one, then this is a common commodity, let us say uh, potato and coal. Uh, if it is above one, this is an inferior commodity and it is spent less and less with an ever higher economic growth, which means that the production is consequently handicapped and it doesn't really make sense to invest in it if the economy is growing fast then we have to know whether the commodity falls under the Prebisch singer hypothesis. National economies exporting such commodities could expect certain benefits from the external trade, let's say copper, uh, or if we cannot expect certain uh, benefit, then countries will record a loss from the ex uh, foreign trade. Then the next uh, theory was the cross-elasticity theory of demand, which also emerged in the 50s. According to this, less developed countries exporting commodities are lagging behind in economic terms because less and less commodity is consumed per capita. So if this elasticity is negative, commodities are competitive, it is positive, they complement each other. Big competitions are gas and coal, and gas and electricity also. So here this elasticity is very strong and very much negative. Most laws in energy are described on the basis of 
panel analysis here, periods can be limited also to only year. And here we, sh we see what we have heard about today. Most of this elasticity was assessed on the basis of a panel. When the energy market started to open up in the European Union and when it transformed from infrastructure into a market economy, it became visible how the market fragmented into regions. We fall under the southeastern Europe together with Italy and Austria. And here we see how this grouping was then also related to serv various sources of the economy. We could so what is the link between the energy sector and the economy as a whole, how much the e energy sector contributes to inflation, to investment, and how is it impacted by certain uh, occasional pikes in technology development. And we were also uh, listening to other speakers who said how this energy influences the external trade balance. But I know that I only have six minutes time, so I won't dwell on this. Then we have the structural analysis, which focuses on the recent development, on the recent period. We have here data for 2009 in Slovenia that was just recently published by the Statistical Office. This shows how a certain activity impacts uh, production, added value, wages, depreciation and taxes, how it influences prices, coverage of import with export, how it influences the labor occu occupancy rate and uh, the capital rate, how it uh, influences research and development, and how it actually also influences the capex, the investments into fixed assets, which are necessary for the production to sustain. And this also uh, shows us the influence on energy on consumption by the citizens. We also, of course, take into account historic uh, research, uh, which uh, has uh, led to certain coefficients and certain ratios. If we take a longer period of time, we will not be able to arrive at a law, but rather to an average with which we will not be able to forecast current trends. What is most interesting now is to know to what extent the financial crisis has changed all the coefficients for those uh, indicators that I have just mentioned. The, the three oil shocks were very important. They caused a change in the economy, so they have which led to the transition to uh, from oil to microchips and the mass use of computers. With this, the development policy has increased in its significance. Since 2000, the third oil shock has been happening, and uh, the second shock uh, lasted for a bit longer than the first shock, and the consequences were different also. Then what is very important are the electricity dims or electricity eclipses. The best known was the California eclipse and the New Zealand eclipse, wi which was the first to liberalize electricity. And for that, certain electricity eclipses occurred. The first reason for that was that their investment horizon was not long enough, and they have neglected the grow in demand. And then the growth of prices of energy commodity, which is the result of the successes of globalization following 2002. This led to a better situation in many countries who were exporting energy and other commodities. And this also led to the uprise not only of China, but also of Russia and Brazil. And then the technological changes in the acquisition and transport of natural gas, we also heard about this before today. There are many more competent speakers on that, but you know that this also impacts relative prices and also consumption and competitiveness of the economy.
And this also, of course, has a big influence on the use and demand for other energy commodity. And, of course, this also leads to certain climate change. Today we have already heard a question whether this should then be linked to taxes or certain duties uh, or certain... Um, securities, which are or allowances, which are uh, traded, and whether this will lead to a technological advance towards capturing and storing CO2. The estimates say that yes, this will be the case, but the price per ton should uh, revolve around 50 euro. The assessments that I have read about were that this should rather be taxes rather than securities. But because I, be, because I used to be minister, perhaps this is why I'm a bit deformed in my um, reading of such texts. To conclude, this analysis can provide us with direct and indirect forecasts on the economic growth, employment, inflation, and export-import ratio. At the same time, such analysis can also provide us with an assessment of how this will influence macroeconomic variables, GDP, inflation, etc. Thank you very much.